Before I get started, dear daily fail goons and other tabloid writers, this video is for entertainment purposes only and not intended to promote violence in any way, shape or form. Now, of course, you would understand that if you weren't so busy writing sensationalist bullshit about topics you haven't bothered to research properly. I can assure you that spreading judgmental misinformation is a lot more harmful than any of these weapon tests. Thank you. Alright, so here's the Drama Dagger 2.0. You may know that the first version that Jörg at the Slingshot channel made caused the whole Daily Mail drama and trouble with YouTube for a while. Then he sent it to me, or tried to at least. It got lost in the mail, mysteriously vanished, never to be seen again. Then he made a second one. This one actually arrived. So I did some tests with it and I'm going to talk about the practical aspects of it. So like a regular review. And I want to point out that even though there will be a few negatives that I'll talk about, this does not mean that I'm ungrateful in the slightest. Okay, I very much appreciate, especially that he put this much time and effort into making it twice and then send it to me. So thanks again, Jörg. You know that I appreciate it and I like it a lot. There are just a few practical issues that I want to point out based on the tests that I've done. Okay, so uh, first off, just for fun, several people pointed out that it looks like a dick, <laughs> the handle. And, you know, it happens occasionally that people say that. And my only response is, you watch too much gay porn, didn't you? Because in a lot of cases, what they say looks like a dick doesn't at all, unless they're so obsessed with penises that they see them everywhere. But let's face it. This thing, yeah, okay, okay, you've, you've got a point. This, this really looks like it. Um, that might also be one of the, the reasons why I don't like the handle as much as I could. <laughs> no, seriously, it's really just about the, the shape is, it's better for a slingshot, in my opinion. I mean, you can tell that he's used to making slingshots, obviously, it's a slingshot channel. Who would have known, right? And uh, this is, you know, very much that sort of shape. If you had a, a V shape here, you pulled on it. Yeah, this, this would work just fine. For a dagger, it's a little strange. It's a bit unconventional. I very much like how well finished the wood is. It's also really pretty wood. It's nice and dark. You can see the grain very well. It's really finely polished, nice and glossy. And he designed it with a specific purpose in mind. It is intended for use in this sort of hammer grip and with um, an upward thrust like this. And that's really what the handle mainly facilitates. However, there is a reason why in the historical European manuals that cover dagger fighting, you generally see this grip here, the ice pick grip. So that's just for education. Obviously, this was not designed with historical dagger fighting in mind, but just to explain a little bit the nuances of this design. So in historical times, the clothing they wore, especially during Renaissance, was a lot sturdier than what we have nowadays. You know, this kind of stuff is really flimsy, whereas they had fairly thick clothing that was much stiffer. It's actually not easy to stab through. So this is one of the main reasons why they show the ice pick grip because you can generate a lot more power this way. Now, of course, you saw Jörg stab through the stab-resistant vest. And I mean, you've seen him. He is, he is pretty big and he is very strong. Uh, but if he did that with an ice pick grip, he would have been even more effective. Because you know, if you think about it, an, an upward thrust like this is working for one against gravity. And also you cannot really bring your weight to bear. So this is driven mainly by the arm. I mean, you can put some rotation into it, of course. You can rotate the, the hip into it. That, that's always good using your core muscles. But you cannot drop down your weight the way you can with an ice pick grip. 
Now, if you look at this footage here from the tests, you can see the difference. So I was turning into it, you know, pushing off with my legs and you know, trying to drive it as much as possible with the larger muscles as opposed to just the arms. However, with the ice pick grip, I can also drive with the legs and do the core rotation while at the same time engaging the back muscles more and dropping my body weight into it. So that results in a much more powerful thrust. And you can see the difference here in penetration. Also for comparison here, you can see Richard Marsden doing the same kind of stab in a pretty relaxed way. He just casually steps forward and jams it down with not a whole lot of force, but it still goes in quite far. In fact, the result is comparable to an overhand stab with a lot more muscle power involved. Once again, daily fail. This is not giving people instructions on how to shank anybody. This is from a historical perspective. Calm your tits, okay? I think it would actually be better if the grip was not as specialized. Like in this case here, this can be used either way. Either grip works just fine. And you can, this way you can put the thumb up on the blade for more control, things like that. You have plenty of options here. You can switch to this sort of grip. And it makes sense, especially in this case because it doesn't have an edge. So you don't need to feel exactly where the edge is. It's for thrusting anyway. Also, I found that even though Jörg said that the ice pick grip wouldn't be good with this, it's actually pretty okay. I personally preferred this way. I mean, the, the finger grooves don't line up as well this way as they do with the other grip, but it's still perfectly adequate. Uh, the other thing is he was talking about shaping the grip here in a particular way to not make it hurt too much when you stab like this, because this pushes down, uh, particularly if it pushes down on the bone here, that can get very painful. And uh, he was trying to minimize that. However, if you have it this way around, here you've got the, the fleshy part, the, you know, the meat of the, the palm of the hand. This can take a lot more abuse. So this can absorb the shock way better, and this is not going to hurt. Whereas this, you've got the bone right here, and there's really only skin on top of it. There isn't any meat like it is here. So again, this for a really powerful thrust, if you don't want to injure yourself or hurt yourself, then this is actually more effective than this. Now, all that being said, I understand why he shaped the grip the way he did for the intended purpose. And for that, this does definitely work better than this, for example. I mean, in this case, with the, with the discard right here, if you were to throw a really hard thrust, this would ride up against the discard, and yeah, this would hurt, definitely. So this would be for powerful thrusts. This kind of grip would definitely be better. Um, otherwise, this would minimize that a little bit because then you don't have this part of the base of your thumb jamming into the grip. But I mean, it would, it would still jam your finger into it. So it's, it's better, but you know, this is still more comfortable to use for that kind of purpose. And just, the way it conforms to the hand definitely feels nice. With the way the handle protrudes, this would be good for striking because it tapers a little bit and there's enough mass, enough material here that you could strike effectively without breaking it easily. Also, I think this design might be quite good for throwing. I should probably try that next time because it is quite smooth on this side here and it's a bit curved. So if you throw it with a no spin technique and slide the th finger across here to give it some counter spin. This wouldn't have a lot of friction. So this should actually work quite nicely. As far as the spike is concerned, well, it's a spike. It works. Hollow ground is certainly effective at getting the maximum penetration depth. Yeah, yeah, I know, make your jokes. You can see right here, it goes easily into the plastic bone analog, which by the way, isn't terribly realistic. It's just what I have. But when pulling it out, you can also see the cross section quite nicely. Obviously this would be good against armor and um, it doesn't require any maintenance, really. I mean, a spike like this, what can go wrong? If the material is too soft, then the point could bend, but this is pretty hard steel. And even though it tapers quite a bit, it's not a needle point at the end. There is enough material there to be pretty sturdy. 
so not a problem there. And even though apparently a few people were skeptical about the plywood he used and the glue, nothing wrong with it. And it's absolutely rock solid. It's uh, also really tight. There are no gaps that I can see or feel anywhere. Everything is completely smooth. As I said, it's nice looking work and it looks like it might serve a dual purpose for the ladies and some guys. I mean, it seems smooth enough for... Anyway, whatever. So I might modify this a little bit, you know, grinding out the finger grooves, just make it smooth and then maybe grind this down a little bit as well, just to make it a little straighter, like more like a kind of standard dagger grip. I think that would work a little bit better. But otherwise, yeah, it was really cool to play around with this. So that spikes are interesting and the way they perform and everything is, is always impressive. As I said, I appreciate it despite my criticism of the handle shape. I definitely had fun trying it out. I hope you had fun watching the video. Let me know and have a good one.